Hey guys, Coach Andrew here from Players Fitness and Performance with my co-pilot, Travi B. Travis Buley is his real name. Hey, if you're a coach, if you're a parent, you're gonna wanna give this video directly to your athlete. You can watch it too, but this one, we're gonna talk directly to the student athlete who has not yet figured out the solution to being truly happy, confident, and successful in everything they do. It lies within this triangle right here. Athlete, if you do not figure this out, you will spend the rest of your life always blaming circumstances, blaming coach, blaming parents, blaming your height or your lack of height, blaming everything on your results. But at the end of the day, this triangle explains exactly what is needed in order for you to be truly successful because you're right in the center of this. We have coaches who influence you, right? Coaches have such a big influence in your life, so big that I have college athletes that both Travis and I work with who are 19 and 20 years old and still are going to bed at night feeling terrible about themselves because of what coach said or what coach did. It does not have to be that way. Coaches, you've got a big influence. Parents, I've got athletes who come to me crying in tears because they can't figure out why their parents are putting so much pressure on them and they can't figure out how to please their parents. They wanna make their parents proud so badly that it brings them to tears. And then finally, we've got society down here, which consists of your friends, your social media followers, and the people that you follow on social media. All these things are dragging you down, dragging you down, and here you are, athlete. You're right in the center of all of it. Poor you, right? No, not poor you. Yes, your coaches have an influence on you. Yes, your parents have an influence on you. Yes, society has an influence on you too, but I'm here to tell you that nobody will destroy your confidence except for you. Nobody, your, your coaches will not be responsible for destroying your confidence and your belief in yourself. Your parents will not be the ones who are responsible for destroying your confidence and your belief in yourself. And society, you will not be able to blame society, guys. It is up to you 150% to take personal responsibility for your happiness, for your success, for your results, and your, for your performance. And that's what we wanna to talk to you about today, how you can put the ball back in your own court and become responsible for how you feel about yourself and your results on and off the court. I'm really excited for this one because as an athlete, when I was growing up, I definitely fell on both ends of the extreme here. When I was really young, the whole reason I started playing football was because my stepdad at the time, that was his favorite sport. So I dove all in and early on, I didn't really like it that much. I didn't want to play anymore, but I kept playing for the sake of making him proud. And a lot of the stuff I did, I placed my self-worth in his analysis of my performance. And as a result, I was kind of unhappy with how I played continuously. It wasn't until I got to college and I really just started playing football because I wanted to play football again and I enjoyed it. And then when I moved on, I got to play rugby. When I played rugby, I didn't have anybody in my family really checking in because they really didn't know what rugby was, so that helped. And I was really playing for the sake of me just getting out there competing and having fun again. And that's when I hit the, my biggest peak of performance was when it was me dictating what I was doing, what success looked like, and not these other factors. It becomes so easy to blame coach, to blame your mom or dad, to blame your peers, society, whatever you call it. It's so easy to blame other people for you not feeling good about yourself, for you not having success on the field or court. But it's easy. The hard thing to do, the hard thing for you to do right now is to look at yourself and say, am I responsible for my own happiness and success? Or does my coach really have that much power over me? Guys, you know it's true. You know that you have the ability to choose whether or not you're gonna let sports bring you down or be something that you do. If you believe sports are who you are, then of course, this is gonna rock your world all day long. A bad game, a bad coach, a bad season, a parent who screams from the stands. Guys, I get it. We need to have more love-powered coaches. We do. We need to have coaches who know how to lead with love. We need to have more encouraging and supportive sports parents who know how to not interfere with your success. I get it, I'm with you. And I wish society didn't pay the most money in the world to athletes. And I wish athletes out there who, who influence you on social media, I wish it wasn't the way it is, but it just is. But you have to ask yourself the question, do they have the power over me or do I have the power to choose?
Yeah, and I think what Andrew touched on there too, a big point is you got to determine what success like, success looks like for you, right? You can't let your coach, you can't let your parents, you can't let society dictate what your success zone looks like. So my challenge is to find what you want to go after, what you want to go towards, right? We encourage a lot of the athletes in here to fall in love with the process. The outcomes eventually take care of themselves. Take pride in that process, the work you put in. You can't always control how the games go. There's so many variables outside of your control. And if you leave it up to that, then the parents, the coaches, they're not gonna be having their performance all of the time. So again, fall in love with that process piece of being an athlete or whatever you wanna be, playing the piano, right? You're not gonna be great overnight. Fall in love with the process of getting better. It's, honestly, it should be icing on the cake if you've got an incredible parent who's like motivating for you, who's always there for you, who loves you unconditionally and supports you unconditionally. If you've got that coach that you're just like, gosh, this is the best coach I've ever had. They get me, they spend time talking with me, they teach me how to be better, they don't just tell me to be better, they actually teach me how. And man, my friend group and everyone around me, I mean, it's just great, everything's great, everything's great. That should make you better, right? That's great, it's icing on the cake, but it doesn't, you don't need it. You don't need anybody but yourself to truly make things happen, to be the best athlete you can be, to be the best student you can be, you need yourself. And yes, it's a bonus when you have people around you. And I'm not saying that just heck with everybody else. I'll be me and I'll do me like that. You won't be successful that way either. But I'm talking to you if you feel like the odds are against you. If you feel like you grew up with maybe you, you didn't have a parent, right? Your dad wasn't around. Your mom wasn't around. If you grew up and all you've had are coaches who beat you down and tear you down. Guys, I'm talking to you if you're this kid. And to tell you, you get to choose today, right now. Guys, these people aren't gonna destroy me, right? I get to choose what my destiny is gonna be. I get to choose how I respond, just like Coach Travis said. I mean, you get to respond in a different way. We had an athlete come in here a couple years back and, uh, and she had marks on her forearm. She had been cutting herself. This is a track star. She goes out on that track every day and people see, but they don't really see, clearly. She had coaches who didn't really notice she was struggling. She had parents who didn't even pay attention and notice that their daughter had cut marks on her arm. She was struggling so hard because she was getting bullied in school by different people, beating her down. And you know what she decided that day when we talked to her? She decided, you know what? No longer am I gonna let everybody else determine how I feel about myself and let all these circumstances beat me down. You know what, no. Instead, I'm gonna be the most positive hardworking, responsive in a positive way type person that has ever walked the planet. And today, she has a scholarship, she's got great relationships, great friendships, she's crushing it in school. That could be you too. Yeah, and when it comes down to Andrew's touch on it multiple times, you gotta take ownership. Wherever you're at now, it doesn't matter what you've been through, take ownership of where you're at now and dictate your path moving forward. But it all takes the good, the bad, take ownership of it and let's start moving forward in that process. And silence is the worst solution for anything. Man, if you are just sitting in silence and you think that your coach knows what you're thinking, or you think that your parents know exactly what you're thinking, you're wrong. You gotta, you gotta share your voice a little bit more. And if you're a great athlete and things are great already, and you're like, you know what, I feel something in my bones like Kobe Bryant and I wanna get to the next level, if that's you, tell somebody. Say, you know what? I'm not content here. I, I, I don't want to be complacent. I want to get to the next level. You have to open up your mouth and ask for help more. There's, this is a, uh, an epidemic in today's middle school, high school, college student athletes. Don't be the kid that is silent. You got to ask for help. If you don't do this, man, you're setting yourself up for failure. And again, it won't be coach who destroys your chances of success. It won't be your parents who you can blame. It won't be society. It'll be you. Right? You'll destroy your own chances at massive success, whatever that means to you, like Coach Travis said. So you gotta decide today, am I gonna take responsibility or not? Yeah, and it really takes being uncommon. I mean, you see this one down here, society's constantly pulling us down. It's not normal to open up and ask for guidance. It's not normal to ask for help. It's not normal to be different and put yourself forth into yourself, work on yourself, and go after it like most people need to do to get to that next level. So my challenge is don't let this pull you down to the point that it makes you feel different and weird and insecure with yourself. That's a good thing if you're different, because if you're different, you're going against the grain and you're not gonna end up in that average zone. This is where you wanna get, don't let it pull you down. Don't be afraid to feel different. If you notice, athlete, 
you're on the inside of this triangle. You're protected right here. These people, they're on the outside, right? You need to let them in when they've got your best interest at heart, right? You gotta let them in and let them help you, uh, but this is you. This is, you're in the middle of this thing and it's your responsibility to ask for help, to work your butt off, to respond proactively and not reactively, and to do everything you can to be the best you can be. It's just like the story of the two brothers. This is how I'll end it. Two brothers grow up. Dad, alcoholic and a drug addict. Mom, doesn't have a job, alcoholic as well. Dad goes to jail. Mom leaves. The two brothers had to raise one another, right? Brother number one goes to prison. Brother number two ends up with an amazing life. A great wife, a great family, a great job, making a difference in his church and his community. So a news reporter figures out this story and says, you know what, I wanna know what was the difference between these two brothers. News reporter goes to brother number one, visits him in prison, says, hey, John, you know what? I mean, how did you end up in prison? Like you had a tough upbringing. I mean, tell me how you ended up in prison. He goes, with parents like I had and an upbringing like I had, how could I not? News reporter writes down the answers, goes to brother number two, visits him in his beautiful home with his family, and he says, Steve, how did you end up with this? I just came from the prison. I visited your brother. He's in jail for the rest of his life. He said, Steve, how did you end up with this beautiful life? And you already know what Steve said. Steve's response was the same exact response as brother number one, John. He said, with parents like I had and an upbringing like I had, how could I not? So that's the choice you have to make. You put the ball back in your court, take responsibility, athlete. Anything to close, Travi B? Hey, take ownership and get after it. All right, guys. Stay strong, stay empowered, keep your mind right, and play with passion. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.